Hi everyone, I'm Ruth Maidley and I'm an actress and Shine very kindly invited me to join you this evening at the Shine Ball to share my story and my experiences of living with spina bifida. Now, sod's law, the second everything was put in place for me to join you this evening and travel down, I found out I'd been asked to work overseas very, very last minute. So I'm actually in America at the moment working, which is fantastic and I'm really thankful, but I'm also really sad to be missing tonight's event. So I just want to say a massive, massive thank you to the guys at Shine who let me do this over video because they're such an important charity and the work they do is so fundamental that I wanted to be able to tell you about why that is. So yeah, thank you so much guys. I really should have dressed up for the occasion. I should have worn the ball gown that I got for the night. You know what? Never mind. I can save it for next year because I'm hoping that I'm going to be invited next year. So, so if someone could put me on the guest list, that would be great. <laughs> so my mum found out that I had spina bifida six weeks before I was born. And her experience was not a positive one when she was told. She was given incredibly negative feedback information. She was told I wouldn't walk, I wouldn't do anything that normal children would be able to do. She was told that I might not be able to move my arms, I'd probably have quite severe brain damage. All of these things that doctors really can't tell. Spina bifida is often known as the snowflake disability because no two people with spina bifida has it affect them in the same way. So many people with spina bifida have hydrocephalus, many have other issues that go along with that. I, I was tested for hydrocephalus, but I, I don't have it. But because of my spina bifida, which was myelomeningocele, um, I developed scoliosis at 18 months and had to have a lot of surgery to straighten my spine due to the muscles being pulled through the spina bifida. So it affects so many people in so many different ways that it just blows my mind that medical professionals can say that a child won't do X, Y and Z when they have absolutely no way of proving that at all, especially not at such a young age. Now, I always grew up knowing that I was different, but I'm very, very blessed to have a family who would never, ever, ever let me see myself as a victim, <laughs> ever. No chance of that in our household. Being different was something to be celebrated. And my mum, my dad and my big sister are incredibly proactive people and I just got on with life. And that was, that was how I was brought up. And I think that has gone a long way into helping me in the career that I'm in. Now, I did not train to be an actress at all. I fell into this in a really roundabout way. I always knew I wanted to be in the industry, but I trained, my training, if you call it that, was in script writing. My degree was in script writing. So I always thought that would be my way into this industry. I knew I'd always had a passion about disability representation within the media. And I thought my voice my activism would be through my writing but fate had a little bit of a different idea so when i was doing some work placements after university at the bbc i met some producers who were looking for a wheelchair user for a very small part in a cbbc drama and i was really nosy about the whole casting process about how they look for people on screen what the different di the directors would be like, what the pro different producers would be like, the execs, all of those things. So I went along really just to have a bit of a nosy and see what, it, what all the fuss was about. And I got in the room, I did the audition and I fell in love head over heels with the whole thing. And I knew at that point when I sat in that room, it didn't matter whether I got the part or not because I knew this is what I was meant to do. And I did get the part. So completely blown away by that and that started a chain of events for me. I got myself an agent and all of these wonderful opportunities came from that. Auditions that I didn't get but still really good practice. Keep yourself going and I just thought it would be a great way to earn some extra money on the side you know <laughs> but then 
five years ago, an audition came to me for a BBC Three drama called Don't Take My Baby. And my life completely changed. It was for a BBC drama, a le- it was a lead role, and it was about two people who both have disabilities, they have a baby, and it, the whole story centres around social services involvement on whether or not they're deemed fit enough or capable enough to keep their child. That was the best experience I could have possibly had because it brought disability to the front and centre of primetime television. It allowed me to show what I could do creatively. And the piece went on to win the BAFTA for Best Single Drama and I was nominated as Best Actress. Now, that was, it seemed ridiculous to me. It was absolutely insane that that happened. And the minute I stopped to think about it, I realised I would have never gotten any of these opportunities had it not been for my disability. If I hadn't been a wheelchair user, if I hadn't had spina bifida, I wouldn't have even been in the room for that role. So I knew that this was my route and I had to make this industry more accessible and more open for people with disabilities who want to create change and want to be creative and want to be the best they can be in the industry. So that is where my passion lies. And then from the BAFTA nomination and a bit more recognition, I was asked by BBC if I wanted to do a documentary. And I knew that this was my time to really bring Spina Bifida to the forefront of people's minds. And I wasn't sure whether the BBC would go for it, given the fact that it's, it was quite niche um, and not a lot of people know about Spina Bifida. But my argument was that is exactly why this documentary needs to happen. So I had read about a surgery when I was at college. I'd read about a surgery that was done on babies while they're still in the womb to close the hole in the spine when the baby has spina bifida and I knew that in America and South Africa and all these different places South America all these different places they were doing this surgery and I wanted to explore it some more and learn a little bit more about my own disability because I didn't know how it came about I didn't there was no one else in my family with any disability let alone spina bifida and it really fascinated me not in a morbid way but in a really interesting way I wanted to know a little bit more about myself and what made me me and the BBC very thankfully let me do this documentary and explore the surgery and it was the most incredible experience I could have wished for because finally spina bifida was spoken about on BBC two documentary nine o'clock prime time there it was it was out there so I felt really, really blessed to be able to do that and find out a little bit more about why spina bifida occurs and what can be done to help people with spina bifida now that perhaps wasn't available years ago. But also my main aim was to help change attitudes and that is where I feel that my drive came because Shine is exactly the same. They want to educate, they want to provide information that isn't available when parents find out their children have spina bifida. And then also afterwards, when you're growing up, you need that support. You don't know what to expect. It is a snowflake disability. It manifests itself differently in everybody. So to have Shine available for for parents, children, teenagers, people who are fully grown adults, there is something for everybody at Shine and that's why it's such an important charity. And I feel really, really blessed that in my latest role in a BBC One drama called Years and Years, I was asked when I got the part how I felt it would be to portray this character with a disability. And myself and the writer Russell T Davis worked together to create my character but keep her as having spina bifida because that is my disability. I know how it affects me and I wanted this to be such a positive and really empowering representation of disability at the forefront of television. So I know that without my spina bifida, a good 90% of my opportunities wouldn't have come to me. So yes, 
it can be incredibly hard and I've had a lot of medical interventions I've had surgeries I've had so many spinal surgeries as a result of it but the majority has been pretty damn good I'm not gonna lie so I feel really really blessed to be in a position where I'm able to educate and raise awareness and hopefully raise a lot more money for charities like Shine because they are vital in so many people's lives so I just want to say a massive thank you to you all for attending tonight. I know that you're going to have the best time. I know you've got lots going on this evening, which I'm really, really upset. I really wanted to see the caricaturist. So if somebody wants to get me a drawing of myself by the caricaturist, that would be great. Just saying. I love those things. So I know you're going to have so much fun tonight. And I know you have a fantastic auction coming up. And I just want to say... Thank you so much to every single person who is going to donate, who's going to bid. Please, 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 I'm begging, dig deep because charities like this are so important. Shine is the only charity I can think of that deals with spinal bifida in the way that it does. Its focus is purely on helping people and giving people the information and support that they need that isn't available anywhere else. And so many people would really, really be affected if this charity didn't exist. So please, it's only through you guys that this uh, that work can continue. So please, please dig deep, have the best time, and I really hope to see you guys soon. I am on Twitter, so if anybody wants to ask me anything at all, please find me. I will happily answer anybody's questions about Spina Bifida and about the work that I want to do in the industry to help raise awareness for it. So... Thank you once again to Shine for putting on such a wonderful event. Thank you so much for letting me do my small part in speaking to you guys. And I hope you all have a great evening. Dig deep, bid big and win lots of great prizes and have a great time. Thank you so much, guys. Take care. See you soon.